We're big fans of archaeological discoveries on this channel. You'll already know that if you're one of our subscribers. And if you're not one of our subscribers, you should probably become one today. Our favorite finds, though, are those that come with mysteries attached. They're strange discoveries that can't immediately be categorized or explained, and there are plenty of them to look at. Let's delve into this latest collection. In February 2022, an unbelievable discovery was made in Turkey. Experts are convinced that they found Australian Aboriginal symbols on a 12,000-year-old pillar in Gobekli Tepe. If they're right, the discovery will change history. Gobekli Tepe is already a challenging site for archaeologists and historians. The complexity and sophistication of the megalithic monuments at the site fly in the face of what we once believed about the primitive nature of the people who lived at the time. Some of the carvings might even explain what happened to the unknown civilization that created the site, as they appear to record a comet striking the Earth. The cataclysmic climate shift that the comet would have caused may have wiped the civilization out. These aboriginal symbols are even more controversial than the apparent comet symbols, though. They include a medicine symbol of the kind frequently painted on the chests of aboriginal elders and a second symbol that's only previously been seen on aboriginal Churinga stones. Some of the stones retrieved from Gobekli Tepe might even have been Churinga stones, which were used by aboriginal clans as totems. The implication is that the creators of Gobekli Tepe and the ancient aboriginal Australians were culturally linked and might even have been of the same culture. The ancient Greek and ancient Egyptian civilizations knew each other very well and shared cultural influences and ideas. Could that be why there are Egyptian-style pyramids in the Peloponnese Peninsula in Greece? The pyramids are nowhere near as well known as their Egyptian equivalents, but they're no less worthy of archaeological attention. The origins of the pyramids, which are sometimes called the Pyramids of Argolis, are mysterious. The ancient geographer Pausinius mentions them in his 2nd century writings, but he suggests there was only one pyramid at the site when he visited. A lack of archaeological material at the site makes the pyramids hard to date. Thermoluminescence dating suggests an age of over 4,000 years, but the architectural style is more consistent with the late classical Hellenistic period of 2,400 years ago. Many researchers have attempted to prove an Egyptian connection, including the idea that the pyramids may have been guardhouses for Egyptian mercenaries, but there's no solid evidence to support such a claim. However, the presence of cisterns within the ruined pyramids suggests they had a water supply, so residential use isn't out of the question. Ancient rock art and petroglyphs exist all over the world, but not enough attention has been paid to that which exists on the plains of India. The collection we see here was recently discovered in Rajapur, roughly a day's drive from Mumbai. It includes depictions of naked humans, tigers, sharks, birds, and what might be the hull of a boat. There are around 100 petroglyphs in total at the site, all of which are carved into the surface of hard laterite. It hasn't yet been possible to provide a solid age for the artwork, but the glyphs are at least 10,000 years old, and might even be as old as 40,000 years. Some of the scenes depicted here show us the daily lives of the people who created the art, including fishing, hunting, and gathering. It's unlikely that this is art for the sake of art. The people who made these glyphs were hunter-gatherers, and so the act of creating them would have had meaning and purpose. We can only speculate about what that purpose might have been, but if someone's willing to fund proper, detailed archaeological research at this site, we might get some answers. The Dolmen de Soto is a 5,000-year-old Spanish mystery that's unlikely to be solved anytime soon. There are around 200 Neolithic-era ritual burial sites in the Spanish province of Huelva, but none are quite so magnificent as this incredible subterranean structure. The name Dolmen de Soto comes from Armando de Soto Morias, who discovered the enormous passage tomb as he attempted to build a new house on his land in Andalusia in 1922. 
the great German archaeologist Hugo Obermeier was summoned to the site to excavate it, and he found eight sets of human remains buried in fetal positions, surrounded by grave goods. The goods include cups, daggers, and marine fossils. Burying people with marine fossils is an unusual practice that has never been noted in Spain before, and the meaning of it is unknown. Just as mysterious are the 43 standing stones that surround the dolmen, each of which is covered in engravings showing knives, cups, human figures, and abstract shapes. 100 years after the discovery, we still know nothing about who was buried here or what any of the carefully engraved symbols mean in relation to the burials. The list of archaeological mysteries in South America is almost endless, but some sites get more attention than others. One that doesn't get much attention is Tierra Dentro in the Colombian municipality of Inza. It's a region shaped by volcanic activity, and into the volcanic rock, the region's ancient inhabitants carved a series of spiraling, stepped, subterranean tombs. This is the largest pre-Columbian collection of shaft tombs anywhere on the continent. The many side chambers that make up the tombs are each accessed by dedicated staircases. The work is intricate and complex, but we don't know when it was carried out. Estimates range from the 6th century to the 10th, but it's not impossible that they could be even older. In places, the hypogea have corridors linking them to grand halls, where every surface is covered in paintings and carvings, 40 feet wide and 20 feet high. There are human faces and figures painted on many of the walls, but the meaning of the more abstract shapes is unknown. This is the work of an advanced civilization, but we don't know who they were. Our next mysterious discovery is not a single mysterious object, but several. Take your pick of any of the remaining medieval-era churches in Europe, and you'll probably find a carving inside it of a male human face covered in leaves. Archaeologists refer to these carvings as the Green Men, but they don't know what they represent, or why the symbol spreads so far across Europe. The carvings always appear close to the ceiling, sometimes even as part of the ceiling. And while most of the faces are stoic, some wink or poke their tongues out at the viewer. The symbol of a foliage-covered face can be traced back to the ancient Roman era, and may have roots there, but that's uncertain. Some scholars have noted that the green man is similar in design to Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, who was called Bacchus by the Romans and was often depicted wrapped in leaves and vines. If the green man is Bacchus, though, it suggests that the builders of medieval churches were happy to include pagan designs in their work, and that seems unlikely. In February 2022, marine archaeologists fished a treasure trove of artifacts out of a historic port on the Israeli shoreline. It's the port of Caesarea, and the discoveries made here might shed light on an ancient trade network that existed between Israel, Sardinia, and Cyprus 3,500 years ago. The largest of the recovered artifacts are enormous stone anchors from ancient trading ships. But the recovery team has also found carefully incised lead ingots, and the ingots come from Sardinia. Given the 1,500-mile distance between here and Sardinia, it's incredible to think that there was a connection between them more than 3,000 years ago. The Cypriot connection comes from the fact that the ingots are marked with Cypro-Minoan symbols. The symbols remain undeciphered, but the fact that they're there at all suggests that the lead was mined in Sardinia, incised in Cyprus, and then sold in Caesarea. If people in all three of these places knew about each other, it implies the existence of a web of trade that spanned half the world during a time we consider to be almost prehistoric. Further information on the nature of this network might be right there in the symbols, but until someone decodes them, we can't say. The feeling of going looking for one thing but finding something very different is one that archaeologists know very well. In 2017, an archaeological study group visited a site in the Quildian Range of Hills in Denbingshire, Wales, in the hope of finding Bronze Age relics. They knew the location of a Bronze Age settlement in the area, and they hoped to dig it out. Instead, 
they found a collection of unexplained tools from the Stone Age. The triangular stone tools, which appear to have been deposited deliberately into a stream roughly 4,500 years ago, are of a style that's never before been seen in the United Kingdom. The limestone they're made from does occur naturally in Wales, but not anywhere near the site of the discovery. They're hand tools and might have been used for chipping away at rock surfaces to create petroglyphs and rock art, but that hasn't been proven. The experts did eventually find their Bronze Age settlement, but it seems that there were people here long before the settlement was founded, and that those people had a unique culture. These stone tools represent the sum total of everything we know about them. While we're in the British Isles, let's take a look at an artifact that's affectionately known as the Mystery Pal Stave. It was found close to Rainster Rocks in Brassington, England, and is somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 years old. That makes it a product of the Bronze Age, but it's not made from bronze. A pal stave is an ancient type of axe, and every example of one that's been found in the UK before has been made from bronze. But this one is made of lead. That's an odd and illogical choice. Lead is both heavy and soft, making it an impractical material for a cutting tool. Why then would someone make a useless pal stave? Archaeologists have just one theory. They think that it might have been a mold. This pal stave might never have been used to chop up anything, but it could have been pushed into sand or clay to create the outline of a pal stave, into which bronze could have been poured to create the real thing. There would have been more practical ways to create a pal stave mold though, so the theory doesn't satisfy everybody. Still, it's the best idea we've got. Was the long-lost tomb of Aristotle discovered in central Macedonia in 2016? The short answer to that question is, we're not sure. The claim was made by the Greek archaeologist Kostas Sismanidis, who's been busy excavating the site since 1996. After 20 years of work, he declared himself to be positive that his discovery is the real thing. The tomb is in Stagira. That strengthens the claim because Stagira is where Aristotle was born in the year 384 BCE. Ancient literary sources state that when he died in Chakas Avia at the age of 58, he was cremated, and his ashes were brought back to his place of birth. He was a revered figure, and so it makes sense that this beautiful Hellenistic-style domed structure complete with marble floors would have been considered an appropriate place to bury his remains. There's also an altar outside the tomb, which indicates that whoever was buried in it was of great importance. Fifty coins found within the tomb bear the face of Alexander the Great, who was Aristotle's greatest student. The circumstantial evidence is almost overwhelming, but it falls just short of the mark of certainty. It's very difficult to get close enough to the Coso petroglyphs in California, USA to study them. That's not the fault of archaeologists. It has more to do with the fact that the land they're carved into belongs to a naval air weapons station and is off limits to civilians. That's frustrating because there are 90 square miles of petroglyphs in need of archaeological attention here, and very little opportunity for the professionals to get in and take a look. The glyphs are mostly abstract although some represent figures which appear to be human or at least human-like. Experts in the field of petroglyphs say that they could be anything up to 13,000 years old, which would make them the work of some of the very first people to settle in North America. We wish those people were still around because we'd like to ask them why and how they created art of such size that it can only be fully appreciated from above, in an area that hardly anyone was ever likely to see it. Failing that, we'd be happy if the military allowed archaeologists in for a closer look. Take our next artifact with a pinch of salt. In fact, make that two pinches of salt. It's the King Goody artifact, which is sometimes known as the King Goody hammer, and if taken at face value, it's an impossible object. It's a piece of metal jammed through solid rock, and the metal is unambiguously of human design. It's a thick iron nail. The problem with the artifact is that the rock is from the Cretaceous period. 
it's 360 million years old and so, therefore, must be the nail. The King Goody artifact is named for the Scottish quarry where it was discovered in 1844. It was examined by Sir David Brewster of the British Association for the Advancement of Science at the time of its discovery, and he could find no adequate explanation for its existence. There is also no information available about what happened to the artifact after he completed his study. As far as anybody knows, he was the last person to see it. Is it still hiding in an archive somewhere because it represents impossible knowledge? Or did someone eventually throw it out because they decided it was a hoax? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.